tonight. One championship. Live and free on Amazon Prime. Uh, 8 o'clock Eastern. I can't give you any more details than that. You're going to see, you're going to see grappling. You're going to see MMA. You're going to see Muay Thai. The Rotolo brothers. It's interesting to me, right? All, all I can ever do is what anybody else can do, which is to put yourself in somebody's position and then imagine how you would behave or moreover how you would want to be treated. Okay. Uh, what's up, Evan? Okay, when I think of two brothers on the same card, you've got the positive aspects, like the day that you signed the contract. You think your manager's done a great job. Oh, my goodness, you know. Now we can train together. Now we're peaking at the same time. Now we're training for the same thing and we become workout partners and everything's moonlight and canoes. And like that, that's true. That is really true in the training camp. If you're fighting on the same card as a teammate, in this case it's brothers, just as a teammate, everything can be really great and helpful for you within the training, but also uh, the, the coach within the preparation. When you get there on fight day, whoever goes first is a meaningful advantage which adversely means whoever goes second is at a disadvantage. I'm just talking about the pressure. Your brother goes out there and does a great job. While you're smiling and you're happy for him, there is now a massive pressure on you. You don't want to go home, particularly on the holidays. You're sitting at the table and he's getting pats on the backs and so you, you got aunt and uncle are trying to cheer you up. I mean, like it's a real thing. And then imagine the other side of the coin. Imagine your brother goes out. I mean, this is a grappling match. And for some reason... And I got to tell you, as a leader within the grappling community, for some reason, we get away with, in the mind's eye of a viewer, that this is a family event. Right? Grandma can come out to this, but, but so can kid brother. This is just a fun and family thing. Two guys are out there grappling. If you go and read the rules, it is the most vicious rule set in the history of combat. You're only allowed to do two things. Not only are you only allowed to do th two things, you are encouraged, incentivized, and rewarded to do them, which is one, to strangle somebody, or two, to break one of their bones. It's the only two things you could do in grappling. So just imagine from a perspective that your brother goes out there and gets his ass kicked. It means either he was strangled or possibly was stretched out and extended. Now he's got a broken limb. And you're looking at that while trying to focus and get yourself into a mindset to go out there and compete. And it's a, it's a real thing. And I think if you looked at it from that perspective, I think that you might have a different perspective. So the Rotolo brothers are going to do that. All right, Chael, you sure are a smart one. What time does the event start? 8 o'clock Eastern. Thumbnail game undefeated. You know what? It doesn't give me a chance. I'm new to this live business and this thing pops on your screen that goes three, two, one, smile. And then they take whatever ridiculous face or look you have and they run with it. I would like to know what you think about that though. And you know, I saw something to this very close. It's not as though brothers have never competed on the same car. It's not as though like this is a brand new concept, but it's rare. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even if it's not new, it's rare. I got real close to this. Uh, which was just the McKees. And it was Antonio and Antonio Jr., but they're on the same card. So, I mean, imagine that. Like, in this case, Pops went first. So Jr. and everybody's excited in the back, puts a pressure on Jr., but there's a positive vibe. Imagine it didn't. Imagine Pops got thrown down, pinned up against the fence and elbowed, and he's got cuts and he's bleeding and they stitched him up. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing that Pops is going to walk out and corner you. Rotello brothers, like there's things that I'm looking for beside uh, even when we get to this contest. I will be very curious if Cade corners Ty, ties up first. I'll be very curious if Ty comes out later and corners Cade. That is a massive amount of pressure and a massive undertaking. If you ever have to go and compete, that's it. You're, that is your job. And as a matter of fact, you'll only be called uh, to do it three times a year. It's so difficult. If you're a corner man, you will fly to a different country, to a different continent. You will wait for a week. You'll quarantine. You'll do whatever has to be done for the times just to go into the corner and give advice to a guy. Like, that's a full-time job. What if they're going to do both? And I predict for you they are. I predict for you that Cade does corner tie. And I predict for you that Ty comes back and 
corners Cade. I just don't want you guys to – like, there's a lot on that. How would you like to be in that spot? By the way, guys, I'm, tr I'm trying to answer your questions. All right, soccer sucks. That's the truth. You know what? Like whatever sport you want. I used to play soccer. It was a lot of fun. It was fun because it was easy, but it was a lot of fun. I just don't think the world watches it. I, I don't think you have soccer fans. I think the World Cup rolls around as a good excuse to get drunk. You then pretend to be a soccer fan. I don't think the other 11 months you're talking about it. It's my, that's my own opinion. But people that say they're these huge fans, I think they're lying. And I, and I don't understand why they would do it. it. Seems like a weird thing to lie about. Chael, does 1FC have deeper pockets than other organizations? Uh, I wouldn't know. Interest, I'm, I'm interested as to why you asked that, though. Do you see that? Do you see that their purses are bigger? Uh, let's see. Ty gets the KO in the first round. I imagine will end like it did Saki. That's interesting. Not enough scoring in soccer. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, soccer's not like some easy game. I'm, not I'm, I'm really, truly not dismissing it. I, I really respect that they play no matter what. Like baseball, I mean, I can't imagine how you could hold your head high if you can't go out and do your game because it rains. That, that would embarrass me. That would just embarrass me. I will go do my job no matter what the weather is. Baseball won't play if it rains. I respect that soccer, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. They go on with it. I mean, there's like good things about soccer. I'm just sharing that I don't believe that you guys are fans. I don't, I don't believe that you love it. I think you just try to, to, to say that you do. I don't think you've ever sat and watched soccer that didn't involve having a beer handy. I, I really think that. It's an excuse to drink. Uh, do DeRider and Malalkin as easy as one guy's win by sub or the other gets the KO? Uh, yeah. Yes. I see it your way. Wonder Boy versus Kevin Holland. Who you got? Interesting spot. I'm going Wonder Boy. Kevin Holland retired. If you don't win a world championship, you really can't retire. Like, you just quit. So he quit the sport. Now, it was only for a cup of coffee. But three days later, he comes out of retirement or quitville and finds himself in a five-round atmosphere in a main event. I Tough spot. Tough spot for anybody. Without any other details, just giving you that. Tough spot. Uh, when should we expect Gable Steveson? I, I have a random thought, but I mean it. Do you know who Stephen Neal is? I want Stephen Neal to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. You go, but Chaley never did it. I understand that. But we got Bruce Lee in the video game. We got Mike Tyson in the video game. Jose Aldo and Ronda Rousey were champions of an organization that they never even competed in. Stephen Neal would have gone through everybody. And maybe Gable Stevenson should be there too. But if we're going to get Gable in the organization and expect big things, we should put Steve Neal in the Hall of Fame, even without a competition. I really believe that. Why does Tito say you guys are scheduled for an athletic contest coming up? I don't know, and I didn't know that he did say that. Uh, you just shared something with me. Are you and Anderson now friends? I would prefer to, to be civil when I see somebody. I would prefer to... That boxing situation, be on stage and, and tell the other side of the, show the other side of the coin, which is very positive things he's done. If I had an opportunity to stick a knife in his back, I would. So you tell me, is that a guy you want to be friends with? Probably not. Chael, are you familiar with the wrestler Sebastian Rivera from New Jersey? I went to high school with him. I'm offended. I am offended that you would ask me that. Of course I'm familiar with Sebastian Rivera. Are you familiar with the semifinals of the World Championships this year? Because he was there. Took on Yanni Diakamalas. Not for nothing. I mean, I'm just sharing. That's how familiar I am. Nobody knows the semifinals of the World Championships. I do. And Sebastian was part of them. Hey, big guy. From Joe Jack, hello back. 
I'm going to smoke a fatty. You know what? Can I tell you something about that smoke a fatty? I know people think that's cool. I know you think that's cool. I got no problem with that. I miss the good old day where you potheads were ashamed of yourself and did it in private out behind the barn. You guys should still be ashamed of yourself. You shouldn't be able to brag about it. You really shouldn't. The laws don't agree with me. Culture doesn't even agree with me. You should be ashamed that you're a pothead and you should do it in private. All right. With groceries in Canada... Let's read this again. With provinces in Canada hauling, halting UFC betting because of the James Krause situation, does the UFC act fast enough? I'm going to tell you this before I get into the politics of it. Ontario could not possibly care less about the Krause situation or the gaming or the integrity of said gaming. They're after something different. I'm going to leave it at that. All right. Should Izzy go for an early KO versus Piera? Sure. Yeah, knock him out early. I mean, I'm going to stop the question right there. Sure, knock him out early. I don't know that he's got the power. I mean, I, 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 mean, I just don't. I don't think it's going to be easier to knock out Piera than it would be, uh, say, Cannoneer. Cannoneer got 25 minutes, so... Got to be real careful. If you if you go for the KO, you're not going to win the decision. Uh, shout out. Resurgence MMA. Appleton, Wisconsin. Sam, I hope you don't feel good that you just got the shout out. N no, one, no one knows what Resurgence is. But show the promoter that you got the shout out. Maybe he'll comp you a ticket to a show that I'm quite sure there's plenty of tickets left for. Should Izzy go for an early KO, which is a lot like the question I just read, which means old Chael needs to speed up. Look at this. $10 from William. Why no bad guy ink or merchandise? Bring bad American bad guy shirts. That's a great idea. Make bad guy shirts. That's a great idea. Should I do it at a website called badguyink.com? Maybe I will. Go, go see if that's available for me, would you, William? Thank you, pal. All right, what's up, Chael? Do you think Colby waits for Chemayev to take out Edwards before they fight? Chemayev beats Edwards. Colby beats Chemayev. Yeah, I, I think you've got your order right. I mean, that's between them. They're going to have to go figure that out. But I hear you. Uncle Chael, what would it take for me to pause my salary job to train MMA under your guidance? I'll do the social media, I'll pay the publicity game, and I'll out-tough all the peeps in the business. If you're, if you're truly willing to do that, I could get a spot for you. I won't be in the room training you, but I'll introduce you to Fabiano Scherner. You can come out here to Oregon, and, and, and you can do that. You're already off to a good start. Sounds like you at least know what it's going to take to make it in this business. Doing it's a whole other thing, but the, the, the fact that you at least know what that is, good job. Uh, nice spectacles, fancy pants. Are these fancy guys? Are these, are these what a fancy guy would wear? I'm a little self-conscious about them. Uh, okay, Whitaker versus Izzy. Who you got? Man. I've already seen him fight a couple of times. Dylan Dennis, who wins? Dennis or KSI? Oh, come on. Come on. Dennis is going to touch this guy up. KSI, I bet he brings it in the first round. I will give KSI plenty of credit. I truly will. You, you cannot just make fun or dismiss KSI. There was some event and I didn't see it, but he beat up like two guys in the same night or two guys at once or three guys in the same night. It was something. Even if those guys are hand-picked, it's not the easiest thing to do. K KSI is very legit. You're comparing him to Dylan Dennis. Dylan will smoke him. Come on. Come on. Dylan is Dylan is undefeated. I watched Dylan Dennis go 20 minutes deadlock draw, deadlock draw against Gordon Ryan. I watched it with my own eyes. Five hours later, Gordon Ryan was crowned the world champion. One day, five hours later, he won another championship. Uh, no, Gordon, uh, or rather Dylan Dennis, that's a legit competitor. 
versus KSI, who's a legit tough guy. I'll give KSI credit, but no, you're 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 in a whole nother realm. You're in a whole nother realm of athleticism when you bring Dylan into this thing. Uh, bad man Chael, why haven't you commentated UFC Fight Night event? You would do great. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. And uh, why don't I do this? I don't know. I don't know. Am I arrogant? Am I arrogant? I'm, I'm pay-per-view guy. Is that, is that rude to say? It, it probably was a little bit rude. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll keep that to myself. Uh, Lord Chael, what do you think had a bigger effect on the UFC's growth? Connor's rise or continuing through COVID? Whoa. That's a very... That's an interesting question. Was that meant to be funny or sincere? Because that, that, that actually would require a little bit of deep thought. Uh, what impacted the... Wow. Wow. Point for you. Point for you. Because pushing on through COVID, not to mention being the, 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 the first sport, which then by, by, by virtue makes you the only sport. Yeah, that, that's going to help things. That's good. You, <laughs> I think you meant to be funny, and I think you just came onto something a little more philosophical than you meant to be. Check the site. No American bad guy. Oh, William, I get the point. American bad guy. You added the word American. All right, you got me. You gave me an idea. You're not getting 10% for it. Thank you. I want a chael rant. Who bugs you in MMA the most right now? The heavyweights. The heavyweights, and it's just a collective group. Now, the light heavyweights are making a big push. But for the heavyweights to stand aside, all of them, collectively stand aside, let Steve Miocic, John Jones, and Francis Ngannou go play in the corner by themselves. And nobody even suggested the idea that they should interrupt that little round robin. And now you've got light heavyweights who – a match that nobody wanted to be for the championship is now for the championship. Nobody's making any noise, and nobody's even calling the winner. Hey, I got the winner. I got dibs. I'm up next. This should have been me. This is wrong. That includes Glover, who I consider a friend. But to watch Glover go out and do publicity about a fight and an opportunity that was taken from him and not to make a demand. He's not demanding I'm next. Nobody is. So you want to know who, who bugs me the most? It's the heavyweights. But boy, those light heavyweights, they'll put you to sleep just as fast. Uncle Chael, does Rutello defend his championship tonight? You know what? Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes. The best defense is a good offense. That's a line that I got from Pat's son and my father, but he took it from a football coach named Vince Lombardi. But one thing about Rotello is he is on you nonstop. You, he never gives you an opportunity to mount your offense. If you can't mount an offense, you don't have an offense. And in the time show, that's Miss Priya saying what's up. But in the time restraints, he just doesn't give you an opportunity. I mean, that's a lot to deal with. But that in and of itself, a guy's aggressiveness, you can weaponize pace, and you can weaponize pressure. I think it's representative not only of his Abu Dhabi championship, but of his one championship. I think his offense alone is a weapon. All right, guys. Oh, we got one more. We got one more. Uncle Chael, can Mighty Mouse improve his MMA skills anywhere, or is he at peak level? <clears throat> He's nearly peak level. Yeah, he can sharpen them, and he can keep them sharp. But, but the amount of time that it would, it would take and require in the gym just for him to be prepared is really just enough to stay sharp. You're not going to see huge growth there. And that's just the truth when you get to the top. When, when Once you're the best in the world, you try to just maintain and stay there. Uh, he's open to growth. He's got great coaching. He's open to ideas. But I, I think in fairness to your question, that's a, a fairly finished product. All right, guys, I've had it with you all. Kaboom.